energy. I can feel it. Yes. Linda in. Sizzling. Okay, we are live. We're on Facebook. Perfect. All right. Hi, Tracy. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Madeline? I'm doing well. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Um, hey. I have the chat open if she wants to talk. Um, and then we're on Facebook and YouTube. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Unusual Paris today. Um, all right. I'm doing all my, uh, I'm doing all my Facebook setup here so that way I can make sure I can respond to people also. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, well, it's Tuesday, so that means we're going to talk about all things unusual about Paris, like yes. the culture, history, weird things we see just every day. Um, my first fact that I want to share with you is actually really cool. It was brought to my attention from my mom, who's currently in the States. She was watching the movie Midnight in Paris. Um, and it has um, Owen Wilson in it. And she was watching it. And apparently there was some sort of note that said, like one of the show notes was, um, sorry, I'm just letting another audience member in. Oh, hey. Um, oops, I'm just gonna mute. Okay, perfect. Um, one of the show notes of the movie was that it was based on um, a real story that happened to two British academic women in the 1900s in 1901. Uh, they were visiting Versailles and they were trying to find Marie Antoinette's quarters at Le Petit Trianon and they got lost and found themselves in a little alleyway instead and they both claimed to have seen um, pre-revolutionary France. So I have some quotes of their um, reports that they gave. They ended up uh, coming together and writing a book about it um, that was very popular. It was called um, An Adventure in 1911, and they wrote it under the pseudonyms of Elizabeth Morrison and Francis Lamont even though their real names are Charlotte Anne Moberly and Eleanor Jordan. Um, and I don't know, I thought that was amazing. Some, so in their reports, they claim to have met some uh, historic figures. So one of them claimed that she saw Marie Antoinette in front of Le Petit Trianon. She was wearing uh, like a light summer dress and a white hat with long hair. And but the other one claimed she didn't see that. And then another one claimed that she saw a man that had smallpox and an evil glare. And the other one claimed she didn't see that. But then later they were like, oh, that must have been the close friend of Marie Antoinette. Um, and they both claimed that the minute they went into the small alleyway, um, everything changed visually and they felt a great oppression and dreariness. Um, Moberly, who was one of the academic uh, women, she saw a woman on a nearby window shaking a white cloth. Um, the other one, Jordan, observed an old abandoned farmhouse with an old plow standing in front of it. Um, they both asked these men for directions, and at first they said that um, they were like lost, kind of impoverished people from nowhere because they were in the gardens. So I don't think they knew where they were. But then later, when they got their story more together, they said very dignified officials dressed in long grayish green coats with small three cornered hats. Um, which I don't know. I find it kind of fishy that yeah, they when they got their story they together never, after they looked, <laughs> yeah, like they never quite uh, saw the same thing at the same time. But yet they both claim that they time traveled. Um, and then let's see. Uh, Jordan saw an old cottage with a woman and little girl standing in front of the door, and she claimed they looked like wax figures. So again, like she's not exactly. I mean, 
that's pretty weird to me because I'm like hmm was the museum did they have statues like I'm not sure um but yeah they should have had a little uh meeting before that story went out <laughs> yeah yeah they really should have because then so, the oh, other cliff one... notes wait a minute let me check what was it that we <laughs> Yeah, and like yeah. Moberly, the second one, she said that she didn't see the cottage, but she felt something in the air. And she oh. said, everything suddenly looked unnatural, therefore unpleasant. Even the trees seemed to become flat and lifeless, like wood worked in tapestry. There were no effects of light and shade. No wind stirred the trees. So well, these she, sure, yeah, she sure women, remembered that pretty well, didn't she? <laughs> yeah, these women are definitely writers. But yeah, I was gonna say there may be there may be a, a um, an agenda on that one. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's pretty. But that was a great movie, though, too. Though I mean, you yeah, maybe you've seen the movie. It's pretty. It's pretty dang good. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Long but time. Uh, Owen Wilson is the actor who's um. If, if you've ever seen on YouTube, like Owen Wilson says, wow, you know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a certain type. He's yeah, certain that type. was my first fact. So it was actually inspired by those two women and their story. And I thought it was kind of quirky because, I mean, it's so long ago and they didn't quite have their story straight, but I still want to believe them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Of course. I mean, it's Paris. It's anything can happen. It's plausible. Yeah. Uh, I like I your actually, I like your window, by the way. Oh, thank you. I wish this you're was always my somewhere window. different. Yeah. <laughs> you travel so much. You're, you know, you're all over the place. All over the place. I wish that would be great if I could just have a new apartment every week or something. New window, whereas the actual apartment I have has no window. I think it's called. Uh, you can. I think it's called squatting, and you get kicked out, and you have to go to a new place every time. So. <laughs> maybe be careful what you wish for <laughs> actually that looks like the view um uh, when my daughter and i came here in september and and we did an airbnb oh. that was the view uh we were on the top floor mm -hmm. um it was it really affordable like an airbnb type of situation um paris is actually pretty affordable uh, accommodations wise if you you know if you don't have to stay at some posh hotel but that was the view and you know really couldn't beat it it was amazing yeah i would yeah, probably just stay in my room and look yes. outside all day we did we went out in the little balcony and had you know breakfast in the mornings and you know oh i screwed God. up the coffee every single morning because well this isn't i mean this is relatively so i do half and half in my coffee every morning and so when you go to a grocery store and if you happen if you can find somebody who's really friendly mm -hmm. if you ask for half and half there's no such thing as half and half here even if you're saying really? uh half uh, I, I kept saying de i saw so i knew i'd be like demi lay demi lay so I, he gave me he's like oh 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 and i was so happy i found somebody friendly to help me and he gives me this bottle and i get i go to make the coffee and i'm pouring all of this half and half in basically i realized it was skim milk it's half cream and the and oh. like i mean half you know what i mean half fat that's what you get so I like the worst coffee experience. And by the way, <laughs> the best, I just should have just gone out for coffee every morning because coffee here is delicious. It's not over roasted. It's like always perfect and you can get it everywhere. You did a post on, you did the post on coffee. Is that correct? Like all the different types of coffees you did a blog yeah. post on. Yes. No, I yeah, don't. I... Hey, hi Linda. Ooh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hey. sorry. No, you didn't do that. No, uh, Madeline is the one that did the post. No, I did it my unmute. I'm going to leave the room. I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> okay, <Barbara. laughs> okay. So I was trying to cover up. I knew, you, I knew you didn't know. I was trying to cover up for you. <laughs> <sighs> uh, oh, bye. Okay. Oh, bye. Oh, she left. She um, leave. Well, I, uh, I did a blog post, yes, for how to order coffee because there's so many different ways. And I know whenever... Before I came to Paris, I kind of expected like, oh, when I go there, I'll just ask for coffee and it'll come in a big Starbucks, big coffee. And then I realized, no, it's a tiny little espresso. So yes. I thought that was important. Yes, um, it, it is actually about. really important. It doesn't seem like it would be, but then you get here and you're in line and there, there are people and you don't speak French and you're looking and you can't, you know, you, you don't know what you're ordering, but you, you know. So it's yeah. sort of a crapshoot. You're like, uh, I don't know anything, I guess, at this point. And you just, I guess you order Cafe au lait. And it is actually, it may have been this way at one time, but 
as you know, as an American many years ago, I heard, oh, do, don't order cafe au lait after, you know, in the afternoon. Oh. They don't. It, yes, that's what you used to hear. It was like, oh, they, they'll look at you like you're crazy. I, I order at any time. Nobody looks at me like I'm crazy. I mean, not for that reason anyway. Mm -hmm. um, plenty of other reasons, but you can order any kind of coffee you want at any time. Yeah, you can order any coffee at any time. Like I used to work at a bar in uh, by, um, oh gosh, why am I forgetting this? Place Vendôme. And people were ordering like uh, beer pints after beer pint. And then you'd get like a hot chocolate, you know? So, yes. and I'd be kind of like, oh yes, okay, perfect. Someone different. Yes, <laughs> like, <laughs> a hot chocolate in the summertime, but it's good. It's like dessert. Some of the hot chocolate here, obviously, I mean, it's like, drinking literally hot melted chocolate is so good you can yeah, dip pastries into it Ooh, just Ooh. dip those pastries oh yeah oh yeah um speaking of pastries uh, what i want to share has nothing to do with pastries but um mm. i had spoken a couple of weeks ago i think about that uh that bridge party that we so we were yeah. um yeah that was oh, it was it was i was so jealous that i wasn't 19 years old not that it mattered we did we were hanging out there anyway but it was pouring rain and we were waiting for it to stop and this was I guess maybe at 10 o'clock at night or between 9 and 10 and people uh you know young people were under the bridge just kind of hanging out and having picnics because they were trying to avoid the rain so they didn't they didn't stand there and wait for the rain to stop they just did their business they spread it all out they had there were people celebrating birthdays. So there was birthday cakes there. Somebody brought this big speaker uh, with a disco light on it. And <laughs> it was amazing. So let me see if I can find the video. So uh, there are two, there are two, I'll, sh I'll show the first one that kind of gives the scene. And then if I, if I can, and then the second one is kind of our, our feeling on it, but can you hear it? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, I can. Ooh. So this wasn't just a few people. Like this was, this was, I don't know, 150 or 200 people. This wasn't a couple of people enjoying. This was like... Oh my gosh. Seriously. And you'll see there's that big old puddle there. A big puddle? Oh yeah. It's great. And there was so there's a big puddle under there, and everybody's just kind of around it. And they're just playing dance music. They went and played some disco, so we were happy. And at first we were kind of just standing there, and then we went, forget it, we're gonna dance too. So we, everybody was sort of dancing, you know, and, and he and I were like, woo, just hooping up. And nobody, I mean, nobody thought we were, you know, too old to be enjoying, you know, we were just kind of part of the crowd. But so basically you can impromptu just hang out under a bridge and most likely you're going to get just a breakout dance party. Yeah. I think it's unusual and amazing. I don't know of anywhere that that happens in the United States. I think it should. I think if we did that in the United States, we might, you know, kind of, I'll be a little bit happier in general and, you know, get along a little bit better. Just yeah. have fun anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I think it comes from, there's a lot of, uh, um, sorry, it's telling me, okay, he's in, um, there's a lot of like picnicking here. And so people are really in the moment when that kind of stuff happens. Whereas I feel like in the us in my experience i wouldn't be picnicking or if i was if it started raining i'd probably get in my car and yeah. drive away. <laughs> <True. laughs> whereas like here Very you're true. kind of stuck unless you really want to get in the metro with everyone else who's trying to get away yeah. at the same time yeah. um i have a quick fact about like a funny french culture thing so the bees you know like uh, the kissing French kissing when you go and you meet someone and you do the kissing on both sides yeah yeah I don't know if you've like had lots of experience with that because when you got here we pretty much went into quarantine <laughs> yeah we're not we were, we were elbows and then kicking you know doing the hacky sack kick and then nobody was near anybody so yeah not too much oh that's cute I didn't know the hacky sack thing the hacky sack kick was a thing yeah oh. not for long I guess but 
Well, I think I saw people doing it the other day too. I don't think people oh, are still, are, they're not ready to kiss too much yet. Yeah. But. It's like, it's uh, kind of gone away, which is interesting because in history, it actually went away before, but I'll talk to you guys about that. So the oh. French kisses that we're talking about is la bise or fair la bise so you meet someone and you do like one two um and usually it's two but sometimes it can be three and it goes up to four and the more south you go the more kisses you have to do so i think in lille you do three maybe but um you definitely start on the right in lille whereas in paris you start on the left oh i didn't usually. know that yeah, usually since I'm American, I just sort of wait to wait. see if the like, other person does it first. Like, you lean in for the kiss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm, kinda it, like, oh. I'm ready to just be like, yo, hi, yeah. you know. <laughs> but if they like kind of look at me like, what? Where's my handshake? Where's my kiss? I'm like, okay, because yeah, yeah, yeah. um usually so when kissing you usually touch the other person's face with your cheek you don't actually kiss them um and you have to make a kissing sound otherwise it's rude even though oh. i mean you just it's, for me it's not that it's rude but you kind of make the sound to just say that it's over on that side you're just like mwah, mwah. so okay. but if you just go it's like what what just happened you know like you kind of that's the it's the sound to keep you guys in the same um and then you're ostracized yeah. you're like known as like the worst air cheek kisser in paris and nobody will kiss you and you just, yeah ugh. Ugh. kathy asks have you ever gone in for ladies and ended up kissing on someone's lips no <laughs> <laughs> no because well, not, yeah i know you're not on purpose but <laughs> <laughs> no oh she, she has did. oh my oh. god <laughs> Wait, Rod I roger know. don't listen don't listen roger i want to know this story oh. um i mean i don't think it's happened to me because yeah i just don't think it's happened to me well, i feel like be, usually right because I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, too. If you go on the wrong side, I'm sure it happens. So, um, usually you do it when you meet someone in an informal context. So, if you're at work, don't do it. Oh. Like, just unless your superior does it first or um, a coworker that you know in the two form, like the more informal. Instead of vu. because you have two and vu. If you know them in that way in the two form way you can do the bees mm -hmm. um and then some rules or things to know <laughs> is that women tend to have to kiss everyone like men and women when you meet people but men only kiss close friends and family members so they'll do like handshake or like this weird like like you know i don't know what they yeah. do it's like the bro handshake <laughs> it's kind of sad but there's um, like no bro kissing there's like <laughs> I, no I don't think so like I don't know why it's not a thing because I'm I'm it has been in history but um yeah. and then kids apparently kiss everyone even if they don't know them well but I worked in a primary school as a English teacher and I honestly there was no like kisses at school they don't do it with their teachers they haven't seen them do it with each other because they just go to school it's probably the same right. as like professional context right um and then I've never seen two little kids like at a playground like having a play day I've never seen that so I can't speak to that um I'm not I don't really know and then um when you leave I love this because I've experienced this in real life when you leave a dinner party or arrive at a dinner party or just a house party you have to kiss everyone like hello and goodbye otherwise it's rude because someone's like where's my kiss blah 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 <laughs> which is so weird to me because it's like in America it's not a thing no, we do Irish goodbyes in America. We just leave and don't even yeah. talk. And you look around and are like, well, where, where'd Joe go? Where'd Tracy go? Yeah, I guess she left. Yeah. <laughs> she was yeah, yeah, like, you feel rude that you didn't notice them. Yeah. 
<laughs> you're like peace this party sucks <laughs> like what do you do <laughs> yes yeah, there's all this social context and the display of manners that if you aren't from i mean it's that's a lot to have to try to comprehend i i've already encountered that you know meeting um you know uh, somebody else's co-worker it's not my co-workers but i uh it, and i kind of wait for them to lean in and i think they're waiting for me <laughs> and i don't like no you you really i i defer because you have to you have to dictate i don't i don't know what i'm doing so yeah yeah it's a little stressful i, um, I know um like whenever I've gone to kiss everyone hello and I don't know anyone there because that's happened to me before like a lot I don't usually go to a house party and know everyone there here I just usually go with one friend yes. that knows everyone so I've gone and like you try you do the bees and then while you're doing the bees they say their name and then you're so focused on doing the bees correctly that you're like I have to say my name too. Like, it's so weird. <laughs> you don't remember their name at all because you've got this, this, and, and then you're going, do I kiss two times or three times? Where am I? I'm uh, in a it's suburb. it's always twice. It's oh. always and I, twice yeah, I heard in the years. suburbs is where you kiss three, but I don't know where the suburbs are here. I don't know where they start, where they end. Uh, How do I know this? Well, oh. I don't so, know. I have friends stress. from different cities around like the suburbs, I guess. And mm -hmm. um, it's just outside of Paris, basically. But they don't kiss three times. So I think it's very specific places. And then what's interesting, too. Um, so I looked up like the history of this as well. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. So the history of this, the Roman Empire actually popularized this when they spread through Europe and North Africa as their empire grew. Um, they had several words for different types of kissing and the bees comes from the root uh, basium, which, well, I guess it's not a root, the word that they use for uh, kisses that signify courtesy and politeness is basium. And okay. so um, that's la bise today. Um, but actually during the 14th century, when the plague was going on, they didn't do it at all. Um, Good. Yeah, Good so it's kind of like now with COVID-19, we don't do it at all. <laughs> and then, but- You're right, came, that's an incredible parallel. <laughs> yeah, so I thought that was interesting um, because it's kind of the same as now in a way, not yeah. as bad, but um, it came back after the first world war um and apparently the bourgeoisie which is like the upper class rich people said that um they so what they believed that like kisses la bise was for commoners and that idea lasted until the mid 20th century so hmm. somewhat recent i'm not sure who these bourgeoisie were like as time went on but um I thought that was kind of crazy because it seems like something everyone does and it seems yeah. like such a fancy proper thing to do yes. but then the upper class was saying like no don't touch me you know <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah well yeah I can imagine they didn't yeah now you mean talk about the plague too that sort of yeah like, yeah that denotes I mean, it makes sense. I'm kind of like, if, I mean, handshaking is definitely more comfortable, but probably bees is less um, invasive than like a hug would be. Yeah. I would like to learn how to do it, but you know, maybe that's, that's just a small goal. Like <laughs> how to learn how to navigate the, the cheek kisses. Yeah. I, I, already, got the, I already got the French kisses, kisses down and that I can do, <laughs> but it's the, it's the, <laughs> But I guess French kissing is just called kissing here in France. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to share something and I'm trying to pick, uh, I'm going to do a fun, do you mind if I do two fun, I'll do a fun quick, no, I'll do the, okay. I'll end with the I'm fun I'm down one. for anything. Uh, okay. Kathy says you could teach folks when they're in line for Eiffel Tower. Oh. For no, we can't. <laughs> That costs extra. That's that is a tour <laughs> bonus add-on that they can. Have. <laughs> that is a tour faux pas. <laughs> yeah, she said charge them. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, so this uh, over the weekend, I mean, in the United States, there's a ton of protesting going on, and they're doing the same thing here. 
And uh, we managed to make it down to, it was at Republic, I guess, the a big mm -hmm. kind of where all these things happen. And while we were there, um, there we hear this cheering and you see this, this, uh, this guy climbing, basically climbing up the side of a building. And I'll show you and cheering, people are cheering. And at first we weren't exactly sure what was going on, but then somebody told us it was, he was climbing up the side because he was gonna, he was pulling down what essentially is um, like a, a pro white anti everybody else banner, a huge banner. Ooh. So yeah. So this was pretty, um, it was pretty amazing. Where is he? Four floors up, I think. Oh my gosh. So he ran, he ran, he climbed all the way up. That was like four. And then he went up higher. He has a, he has a camera. Cause I subsequently saw a video of, of him talking about it, why he did it, how this, how this all unfolded. The, uh, he's, um, kind of younger guy. He's, um, an aerialist acrobatic, you know, does parkour and all that stuff. Wow. And he saw this huge banner. Um, and he saw people, there were people up there that had put it on, they were on the roof and they were, you know, um, setting off these white, this white smoke. And, uh, he said he could, he couldn't stand it. So he climbed, 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 got up on the roof and he has this, this like GoPro camera up on his head and he's running it and you can see, I'll share, I'll share a link to hit, uh, if anybody's interested, hopefully. I'm definitely interested. Um, and I'll share it on the Facebook page after, uh, on the Facebook um, live uh, dialogue. And you can see the people all of a sudden see, see him appear and they, they don't do anything. They just stop. And he says, basically, I'm, this is BS, I'm taking it down. So then, then you can see then from, from the ground, everybody's cheering and he's ripping off this banner wow. that these people, and they did nothing to stop him. Because essentially, oh, amazing to see. It was it was incredible, and it was like um, it was almost like they, you know, sure they they're talking a big game when they have a, a you know this huge message they're trying to send, and they're on a roof. You know, what I mean that's how they get. But then yeah. when somebody comes to stop them, they're cowards. You know, they don't. Yeah. They do nothing. So it was pretty amazing. So that's the link, and he talked basically. He takes a couple minutes to talk about why he did it, and you know how he was able to do it, and all that stuff. It was pretty interesting. So you said he's an aerialist trapeze artist well he's an acro he says he's an acrobat, acrobat? Okay. yeah and he does parkour so you know he kind of does that thing where he jumps building to building and yeah know. which that must be really good to do here because as you can see from my window the roofs are kind yes. of flat yeah it's probably not all that legal but <laughs> uh, uh, i don't know maybe, yeah. maybe in some cases it is i mean i've seen I've seen some pretty daring feats. Um, I know yeah. it's quite dangerous. I, don't, I think for for the most part, you know, what he did wasn't wasn't totally safe, but it wasn't, you know. Wasn't. Oh yeah, probably not very safe. He probably could have fallen, but it's good that he was trained. Don't yeah. try this at home. Yes, don't try it at home. Um, um, but actually, there was in and in the crowd, like I said, there were a few, you know, dissident voices or whatever. But for the most part, everybody was very cool with each other. I just I saw no no indications otherwise, and everybody was there, you know really being extremely supportive. And I think there were some issues that happened after the fact um, we had I'd left by then because that's when we met to do the, the thing. Oh, yeah, in the the yeah, which was really fun. So that was right before that. And then I just want to show you one more thing um, before you get to your, mm -hmm. your thing. Um, we have protesters and then we have, where is it? Mm -hmm. Clown shoes. <laughs> Speaking of the I circus, aerial and all that stuff, yeah, this this was a it was a shoe store and a shoe he does shoe repair and he's a cobbler. And I was walking by and it said Zapateria and I was and I looked down and went, oh, oh my gosh, it's a collection of clown shoes. So did you, did you get to see what this place was called or like anything about this guy? Like why does he make clown shoes? Yeah, so I have a and I have another photo of it. Um, 
and I didn't get to, I don't, I, he didn't speak any English and I just asked if I could take a picture, but I kind of want to go back there because it was on the, uh, it's in the Marais oh. kind of on the edge. It's near, and it's near the, um, I think it's Cirque Liver, it's called it winter circus or something like that. There's mm-hmm. a circus, there's a big building, um, right around there. I think it's the one block off of Beaumarchais, Beaumarchais mm-hmm. street. Um, and it's like the winter circus. And so there's a, there's the circus bar next to it. And there's all these little circus themed things. Wow. So he's yeah. He's across from there and he's, there's he's a circus there. bar. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of them. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I need to say maybe for next unusual Paris, I need to write this down. I need to do like a circus influence in Paris because <gasps> There's a lot of this like that I've noticed from just research and um, like looking into artists and where they hung out and like like the Moulin Rouge isn't really circus, but it's like there's other circuses that travel like Cirque du Soleil and stuff. And then at Moulin Rouge and Moulin de la Galette, I think that they do like Can Can and Cabaret and have all these amazing shows with live performers that do like daring feats, you know? Yes. I think that's so interesting. Yeah, we should go that we should do the go to the, visit that little area because like I said, it's a whole long block like with all these different there's electro bar, which is kind of like a fun, it's it's like um sort of themey, not it's not circusy, but it's not not. It's got like uh, circus colors and it's very bright and the way that it's styled is kind of like that, but it's called electro bar. So I don't know. Oh. I mean it just sounds like a lot of a lot of fun on one block. So yeah. yeah. It's yeah, on the so list. It's on our list of all the things we want to do. <laughs> on our list, yes. Long I list. think um now that France is in the green zone and we can go into restaurants and bars now. I might wait a little bit longer, but like we should probably do live events where we go inside and like do tours of inside with all the I think crazy... that's a great idea. That's um, a great idea. I'll just do a little reconnaissance ahead of time and check if it's good enough and you know if it's worth us going and get permission. Mm-hmm. Well, like a field trip ahead. The old time. permission. Yeah, the permission <laughs> trick. Yeah. <laughs> So what else you got for us? Um, I have two more quick facts. Um, and then I really want to hear your story about the weird man. But I want to hear, um, I want to hear that before we finish. Which, which weird um, man? The which one that man? broke everything. Oh, geez. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So, because not only is this unusual things to do in Paris or see in Paris, but there are weird people in Paris so we have stories as well oh yeah um, that's like I have a I have like a little collection I'm amassing we'll have to do like an unusual people <laughs> one I have like photos unusual of unusual people yeah I actually yeah because I take pictures of all the unusual things I see but it's like a daily basis of seeing yes. weird stuff like <laughs> so, it's really on a, it's it's on a daily basis yeah like that's so, why I thought of this uh live event idea so we yeah. should just get back to the root of why this event was made. But um, <laughs> you draw all the pictures of weird people. Yeah. Um, so I got this fact from one of my French friends. Um, he said, so in English, when someone does a theater performance or any kind of musical, any kind of performance, they say break a leg. But here they just say merde or like any other swear word <laughs> um, or like bun mad or something to say break a leg, but they're just swearing at you. And what does mad thought, mean, Madeline? Uh, poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it means shit. Oh, shit. Uh, yes. I, I mean, I think I'm allowed to say that. I don't know. That's, I mean, I so. it's Facebook. Live. Well, you just said mad and you're here. So, I mean, it's like, True. what, do you, you know? it's the same what if you thing. say, yeah, if you say mad in, and we're broadcasting from United States or like, then is it an actual curse word? That's like that weird line. It's like a weird yeah. line. I mean, it's all just words at that point, you know, like I, because you say um, like, oh, like whoop whoop de doo or something. I don't know. If you're saying it in, in the place of a swear word, it becomes the same meaning. Correct. <laughs> oh crap. Well that's the same thing. 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> that sounds worse to me than anything you could say other than that. <laughs> um kathy says the clown bar in lemurie is meant to be really cool inside i want to yeah. go i'm really scared of clowns though i i feel really uneasy about them like not necessarily that i'd see clown shoes and feel weird but if i went into a bar and there it was like served to you by people dressed as clowns Ooh. and like that would be fine too but if i went around the corner and i saw one and i forgot or something i'd be like oh why yeah. <laughs> or mine, what about mimes do mimes freak you out kind of aren't they, <laughs> just that they serve normal people too <laughs> <laughs> clowns welcome of course <laughs> oh i should research mimes uh, that's a really good idea um because i believe mimes are like they're clowns but they're unique to france like of yes. origin so I, I need to know more i don't know enough about the clown culture um i'm fishing for you <laughs> <laughs> i catch ya. all right she says marcel marceau yeah mm. he's the only one i know of actually <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna do research on this and get back this is a good reason to come next week as well yeah. um and then my other fact oh yeah he has a grave at Père Lachaise as well we should ask Maureen for this oh that's a great idea I'm writing it down mm -hmm. writing it down that's for our, uh Friday Friday spooky stories spooky yes. pair of stories yes we'll do Marcel Missy um, oh. okay we okay no we have enough time sorry I was suddenly like oh my god it's 40 um yes oh that's actually okay that's an unusual story that i have about paralysis okay i'm just gonna give you my two facts because we have more interesting stories to tell but i just wanted to share this so everyone comes here they go to arc de triomphe and um it's at champs Elysees. um everyone knows of it it's really not that unusual but then um you have two more arcs in between the 10th and the 2nd arrondissement called the Porte Saint-Martin and the Porte Saint-Denis and they're right next to where I live actually um, and they once marked the city limits of Paris and the old ancient um, fortifiers like the, the boundaries are now destroyed and gone but the port the um, are still there. They're little smaller arcs on the Arc de Triomphe. You can't climb them, but they have like beautiful sculptures on them and everything. Um, and they're just in the middle of the city. I didn't middle realize they of, were. Um, I've seen them, but I the just street. There, it's on the same street. So, like, I remember for a few times I would see one and then keep walking and look up and be like, oh, I haven't gone anywhere because they kind of look like twins. Mm -hmm. but it's actually <laughs> too different um oh groundhog day yeah and they were ordered by king louis and then i'm always bad with roman numerals so this is going to be embarrassing but uh xiv is that 14th uh, 12th 12th i think oh we're showing X, wait, no xiv 14th it's the 14th 14th xiv I xii uh, xiv yeah Louis oh, oh, Louis XIV. That's, yeah, Louis XIV. Louis XIV. In the 1670s, he uh, commissioned those as ancient fortifications for the city. So I thought that was cool. I never knew that before. And I literally live right next to them. Um, and uh, I was going to say there are probably Parisians that don't know either. But let me tell you something. Go, a Parisian but, I know like, knows everything. Uh, about their history. I've, I have yet to meet a Parisian that can't tell me everything about the history of Paris. They're incredibly educated. Really? Oh, I feel so dumb. I don't know, I don't know how, <laughs> what they know. I don't know about America. I mean, like, and I have a whole lot less time to, to have to remember what, you know, the last couple hundred years, they have hundreds of years and, and they're pointing out, oh, this is from the middle ages. This was built by so-and-so. This was the oldest. I'm like, how, how do you know this? They just know. They just wow. know. Yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't realize that. Uh, Kathy says, Marcel Marceau is friends with Michael Jackson for 20 years, and Michael Jackson admitted that he learned a lot from Marceau and used many of his techniques for his moonwalk and other dance moves. That makes a hell of a lot of sense. So the secret's out. Oh, yes. Um, that, that makes complete sense, actually. Yeah. Huh. And I have one more fact, and then I'm done with my facts. Um, there's a bookstore it out. Your on out. the Seine. There's a bookstore on the Seine called Lo et les Rêves, which is water and dreams. And it's literally a bookstore. It's also a bar, but it's a bookstore with lots of titles that you can go to. Um, and there's a large selection of different books. Um, there's a heavy theme on travel and sea but it's still really cool to go to a bookstore that's on the Seine and it's in a boat. So I thought that was cool. It's in a oh. barge. So, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. And that's cool. the end of my facts that I have um, planned, but I want to hear your story about the man who broke everything. Yes. Okay. Let me see. I thought I had one more thing to show, but maybe I don't. Uh, I can and I can save. Oh, that was the peacock. I'll, I'll just do one peacock and then we'll, Okay, one peacock. Yay. So, wait, is that what, what was the bottom one? Oh, shoot. Well, what is this? What was, what is this? Oh, I don't even know what, 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 the, what was. Oh, yeah, random Ooh. bird. Yeah, I don't even, I was just biking and all of a sudden went, well, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was mad. Um, and then where was it? Where was it? Oh yeah. So the, uh, uh, park floral opened again. Oh yeah. And you just walk and all of a sudden there's a peacock. And wow. So yeah, peacock in Paris. Wow. <laughs> what? I don't know if it's native. I don't think so, but <laughs> He was oh. he was happy. He was happy. It was open. Everybody was visiting him again. He was strolling around, displaying the plumage, screaming like a a, a mimi. Yeah. So, oh. yeah. So, Ramon <laughs> Davis was right right as confinement ended, and everybody was like one one night people were having this party above here. A lot of people and they put a note up downstairs they said you know we're gonna have we're having this big party to celebrate you know so we kind of dealt with it. and it was until about three in the morning and they were getting out every single frustration and you know they were having a good old time yeah loud 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 so we then i guess the next night or a couple nights later or something um during confinement we we had all kinds of really fun ways to keep you know, keep occupied. We got a disco light in the, in the hallway. You know, we had dance parties here. We dressed up and just took advantage of the situation. So, um, we were celebrating too. So we put on, and this, I actually had this on, a, on Facebook video. I was mm -hmm. Facebook living this. Um, we get dressed up and put weird makeup on and, you know, I have blue lipstick on and whatever purple, like majorly purple eyeshadow. And so we're dancing and the disco lights on and we're, I'm talking with people, you know, that are back in the United States asking, mm -hmm. they're asking what's going on. I said, we're having a party and, um, you know, we're choosing songs, party songs like to celebrate. And it wasn't even that late. It was maybe 1130 at night. It's Paris. It's a city, even though it's kind of a quieter area so so I'm standing there like Ooh, I'm having a good old time and all of a sudden I hear this glass shattering and I'm thinking oh this is a strange time for because here you can hear people dumping out their wine bottles all the time into the, yeah. into the um, recycling but it just keeps going on and on I was, and I'm going what the heck is this so I, <laughs> I walk over to the window and I look down and there's a man standing with a baseball bat or something a big stick smashing out the windows of the, apart of the apartment building. And I look down and I think, is he trying to break into somebody's apartment? And of course, I don't speak any French, so what do I start doing? I start screaming like, like I'm from New York. I'm like, stop that effing guy, you know. <laughs> what the F are you doing? Which I, even if I don't, even if that was English, I'm sure they knew, like there were people around, they knew what I was saying. 
So he just basically smashes the windows and stands there for a second and just starts walking away. Uh, so, oh, that's terrifying. I was like, what happened? So I'm going, stop that guy. Stop that guy. And I'm, and I'm trying to think, how do you say stop that guy? And <laughs> stop that guy. So somebody walks up to him and they said, and of course they said, did you, did you just break all the windows in this apartment? And he said, wait. <laughs> So, so of course, I take I take my phone and I'm still live broadcasting. I'm going down the stairs. I'm like, "Hey, everybody! Somebody just smashed out the windows of the apartment building." Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, and so I go down the stairs, down the stairs. I go out. I open the the lobby door, and there's glass all over, but I don't see it. So I slide on it and do a split with my phone, and I go to grab the the door, and I break up my hand because I. And, <laughs> It was just no. like a fiasco. Um, and so the police came very promptly. Uh-huh. Um, they asked a couple of questions and then I guess he just went bye-bye. This wasn't like a whole investigation or whatever. It was within about five minutes, he was gone. So the next day, oh, so then of course we came in and there were a number of us cleaning up. Mm-hmm. Um, we clean, you know, it's, we spent the next hour and a half cleaning up the floor. But so, you know, we're standing there, you know, and people were saying, well, apparently he said he was upset because of the party that was going on and it was loud music. And we were like, I can't even imagine who would even be doing this. Of course, I was meaning, meanwhile, I've got purple lipstick on and eyeshadow and like the disco light was going. I was like, who would be doing that? That is rude. <laughs> so I tried to stay down there because I kind of had the feeling that as soon as we left, they were going to be like, you know, so. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, so I guess we're all gonna go to, we're all leaving now, right? We're all going back to our apartments, right? Mm-hmm. We're not gonna gossip about this. So the next day, I mean, we went downstairs and there was a there was a stack of letters that he basically apologized and he said, I shouldn't have done that, but the confinement just, it got the best of me and I had some issues. You know, this has very been very difficult and I suffered a loss and I'm so sorry and I'm taking responsibility. Mm-hmm. And he left his name and his address so, so we uh, wrote a letter, Gilles wrote a letter actually saying, I, you know, I understand. And you started to say, to apologize, I'm like, oh, no, 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 you don't tell him it was us. You just say, oh, we understand. I said, don't cop to it. I don't want him knowing it was, <laughs> it was us. But he said, you know, I understand. And if you need, if you need any help, you know, please reach out and we, I can, I can help you find somebody to help. With the, you know talk to oh my god in uh, america that would have been a great way to have gotten sued to leave absolutely and of course i'm american so i'm like mm, 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 mm. yeah you don't don't you don't you don't admit anything in that way yeah don't offer help but we don't admit so yeah and so of course that you've seen it the window's still broken it hasn't been replaced yet <laughs> oh wow yeah so the so the almost 50 year olds partying down actually you know made this guy go berserk and break all the windows so well, you know, that's what happens. Uh, Say la vie. Say I la just vie. noticed we actually are over time, so it might actually <sighs> crash us. Um, so I'm going to save my story for next week, but I did sort of mention it in spooky, scary stories already in like our first one. So if you want to watch that, you'll probably see the story anyway. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So we have, yeah, tomorrow we have, um, oh, tomorrow's wine, uh, wine, wine night. euro. So mm-hmm. wine joy you, that's what it was, wine hour, wine joy you. And so we do wine Wednesday, Thursday is um, Paris chat, Friday, spooky, scary stories. Saturday is um, Paris promenade. Sunday is writing, uh, discovering Paris through writing. So we've got a whole week jammed up yeah. for you. You know, it's how we yeah. do it events every day so just check them out on experience first website the from home section and um kathy asks are you talking more about natural versus regular wines i'm curious what natural is we did discuss that last time yes that, uh you said natural you're gonna go into it right. at some point natural is probably the week after tomorrow i'm either doing chinon which is, or I'm doing uh, Cab Franc or Cote de Rhone. I'm not sure which one yet. Um, different expressions of Cab Franc in, in all the different regions of France, like uh, Bouy and Chinon and Bourgogne and all that stuff, or even Bordeaux. Or I might do Cote de Rhone 
wines or something like that. And then, um, cause I didn't get to amass enough natural wines quite yet. So, cause they're a little bit hard to find still. And the place that I wanted to buy it from, or there are two places, it's not, it's not open yet. So oh. as soon as I get a few more, I will, I will do it. And then you actually should come over for that one because that's something that it's so unique that it's nice to have, a, you know, a counterpart to be able to taste it. So, okay. And Kathy, well. you can come too if you want. <laughs> Okay, well, à demain. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Kathy and Roger, for being here on Zoom. Yeah. And thank you to our Facebook and YouTube audience. Um, yeah, thanks, Madeline. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Roger. Thanks, everybody. Oh, <laughs> she's so sweet. She's really sweet. Okay, merci. Au revoir.